All right, welcome to Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shaw, the otherwise known as the Cow Guy. Thank you very much for tuning us in. And hopefully you've got us on somewhere in the background, right? Like the garage, the barn, the office. Who knows? Let's uh, make sure that we're there with you, though. Let's take a look and see what these markets are doing. I'm going to bring up a corn board and see that we're off here. Uh, anywhere between three and three quarters and four and three quarters cents. We've come back from our lows a little bit, I suppose. Uh, SEPs down four and three quarters cents to uh, three, uh, 378 and a half, uh, two and a quarter cents off the lows of the day. Uh, we got a decent the new crop down three and three quarter cents to 397 and three quarters. And again, that's about two, that's exactly two and a half cents off the low there as well. We've had just under an eight cent range to give you an idea. Uh, that's corn. Let's go to the beans. This is where we had most of the loss. Uh, we're 21 cents lower in SEP, 950 and a quarter's last, two cents off the lows, and we've had a 25 cent range. No, over the new crop, that's down 20 and three quarter cents to 965 and a quarter, a penny and a quarter off the lows there. And we're looking at a 24 and a half cent range. That's what's going on in soybeans. Not good. Wheat in Chicago, what's happening there? Well, we've got another loss. Anywhere between four and a half to six cents lower. SEP's leading us down six cents. 530 and three quarters is last there. Still over five cents off the low of the day, but it's about uh, eight cents off the highs. Uh, March, that's down four and three quarter cents to 573 and three quarters. And again, that's five cents off the low there. That's wheat in Chicago. Let's take a look at the hard red in Kansas City. A little bit of a mixed board here now. SEP's going to be up one and three quarter cents. 550's last there. Two cents off the high of the day, well off the lows by nine cents. If you move out to the March, that's sharply unchanged. 576 and a half is last there. And again, uh, we've had about a 14 and a half cent range. That's hard red in Kansas City. Let's go to Minneapolis from Kansas City. Take a look at the spring wheat. And that's up about anywhere between a half to two and a half cents across the board. Uh, SEP's leading the way higher, two and a half cents better. 5.94 and three quarters is last there. And that's just three and a quarter cents off the high of the day. And we've had, I'm going to call it 11 and a quarter cent range. So that'll give you an idea about where we sit. March, that's up a penny and three quarters. 6.30 is last. And that's only three and a half cents off the high there. That's spring wheat in Minneapolis. Let's get to the cotton and we'll get to our next guest analyst. Cotton, uh, look at this. So we've got a lower board in Deese, 82 points lower, 68.25 is last. Just 20, just 20 points off the low of the day. All right, let's bring him in. Tommy Grisafi, he's with Advanced Trading, coming to us from Valparaiso, Indiana. Tommy, thanks for coming on. All right, brother, what are your thoughts here on these uh, on these prices? I was hoping corn would follow through. Uh, not not a good look for corn there. Um, Im impressive price action yesterday on the down four, up eight or nine. I mean, that was that was good for corn, right? For four dollar corn, and so we're hoping to get higher. Now, with it not, when the corn board looks over at the bean board down twenty three, it has some uh, serious problems. So the price action is so severe in the beans and the sell-off is so intense that there's a lot, as you know, from the floor, there's a lot of inner commodity spreading. So there's people who are uh, long corn, short beans, or they want to be right now, it feels like they want to be long wheat, short beans. Bean is going to become the whipping post till it isn't. The price of beans need to get low enough to where China and the rest of the world say, thanks everyone, we'll buy them all. And it, it, it's going to be like a Warren Buffett type of trade where uh, Lehman's collapsing. They're trying to get a hold of Warren Buffett, but he's on a boat in Alaska without cell phone. And in the end, they let Lehman collapse. Will beans collapse to zero? No, but they'll go to a level where they're so far below the rest of the world's cost of production that everyone gobbles up. Not only is the price low, Scott, but check out or ask your viewers and listeners for the local cash market. This morning on live stream, I asked folks for what local prices are. We now have a uh, many people in America with a soybean as a cash value with an eight in front of it. We haven't been that low since we had uh, President Trump as president and we were fighting with China. Not only are we not fighting with China, they actually came in and bought beans today. So the situation is really tough. You're seeing a big blow up over in the biofuel sector with soybean oil. That was uh, one of the big hopes, I'm sure a few years ago, you talked about it a lot. Soybean oil real close to having a three in the future. So if you think the scary is, if you think the futures in beans are scary, look at the cash markets. Outrageous, eight ninety nine beans in America, Scott. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's not good. It's depressing actually. But at the same time, you know when you have more acres and a bigger yield, I mean that's going to weigh heavy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we got to blame the genetics. A lot of the advertisers on your show are seed companies, chemical companies. Everyone's saying buy our product, we'll help you grow more bushels. And we believe that. I've told you since the day I met you, I'm in the bushel business. Let's market grain like we're awesome at growing it and Mother Nature loves us. Now, in this case, after seeing Jeffy's uh, 
uh, weather forecast. They got one to two across America in the next seven days everywhere. I mean, that's going to grow a big crop, Scott. Uh, it, it, it's not can beans go lower. It's how low do beans have to go to really get demand. That's the problem, isn't it? So we're going to have to wait and see. But yeah, it's, uh, right now, it just doesn't look good. It's kind of one of those things that uh, you kind of have to hold your nose and turn your head. All right, stay right there. We're going to go away. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and talk more with Tommy Gusafi. He's with Advanced Trading, Valparaiso, Indiana. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Let's uh, talk about some meat prices, right? Our livestock, our four-legged friends. Some of them are furry. Some of them not so furry. Let's bring up a live cattle board. And we'll talk about what that looks like here. And it's been all pretty consistently steady, a little bit better, though. But this time... The gainers are in the back. Uh, August, no, let's go to October. October's up 32 cents to 180.35, only 35 cents off the low of the day. We've had about a buck 55 range. But if you go all the way out to April, that's leading us higher, a buck 12 higher there. Uh, 181.35 is last out there, and that's only seven cents off the high of the day. So a little strength in the deferred. There you go, that's live cattle. What's happening in feeders? Um, we've got more of the gains up front here, $2 up front, uh, $2 higher up front in the SEP. 241.35. 50s last 40 cents off the high of the day and we've had a three dollar range so that's legit folks no if that's up a buck 12 the 237.67 and that too is only about 30 cents off the high of the day let's move out to see what the lean hogs have got for us this one's uh rolled over uh october's down a buck 95 the 72.37 that's no point only we're a buck 52 lower in the feb the 68.07 all right let's bring it back in Tommy Grisafi, Advanced Trading, Valparaiso, Indiana. Tommy, uh, anything jump to jump off the page to you when we uh, talk about those prices? Well, when we started the grain segment, the Dow Jones was up 300, NASDAQ was up like 350, Dow's up close to 400, NASDAQ up 420. I would feel safe saying we're uh, well above now those levels, and uh, S&P's up 79, approaching all-time highs just a few percent of points away. When the stock market got a little wild last week, I think it hit cattle, and uh, we noticed that cash cattle had uh, dropped, and then late Friday, we'd uh, seen a nice bounce. Yesterday, they broke. We're starting to have that point where um, we're going to converge, where hopefully the function of the market functions well. That's why we have a Board of Trade CME group. And cash and futures start to come together. I think this little boost in the stock market gives us uh, gives the bull. He's he's going to be able to ride high today. As you know, the bull needs to be fed every day, and that's no bull coming from a guy who's quite full of it. Back to you, my friend. Well, I mean, it's uh, the stock market. It's all okay now. Nothing to see here. Everything's fine. Go back to what you were doing, which you can tell by my tone of voice is 100% sarcasm. Uh, but the market wants it to be over with uh, as fast as possible and, and move along and put it in the rear view. But I don't know if this is one of those things that you can shake off. So if I'm in the cattle arena, I'm going to make sure that my downside is protected. And that should have been anyway before that. But still, if it's not, this is still an opportunity. What do you think? Yeah. I'm going to switch a little bit on you. Their input costs, as far as feeding these animals, hay prices have absolutely collapsed. Corn, soybean meal, all that. The benefit, we have a much lower board. No one benefits as well from these low commodity prices. I think the cattlemen would really like to see interest rates come down, and then maybe the fundamentals continue with the bullish news. Maybe. And then if they, I said this this morning, if they cut interest rates like everybody's been banging on, everybody's got to have the Fed come to the rescue. We're not allowed to have the stock market go lower, right? Uh, what, happens to, what happens to inflation when they cut rates a percent? Hmm, I wonder. You will be talking about inflation. <laughs> the sparks of inflation will be rampant we, we on shall see. Close. We yeah. shall see. There's yeah. nowhere to turn. All right. Thanks, Tommy. Tommy Grisafi, Advanced Trading in Valparaiso, Indiana. I'll bring it back here and hand it back over to you, Suzanne. I, uh, I don't know to laugh or to cry, but exactly good delivery. Right. That's yeah. it. Thank Maybe you, if Scott. you could do one out of each eye. <laughs> well, that would be funny. <laughs>